episode, it's your boy, the King of Philly, Gilly. <laughs> Shout out to Mikey T, the movie star. Man. So I wanted to get your uh, reaction today to the passing of Fred the Godson, Gil. It's a blow to his family and his friends and a major blow to hip-hop. Yeah, man, it is, man. And you know what? Fred was Fred was a good dude, man. Like, Fred was one of them dudes. If, if you ain't like Fred and you had something against Fred, like, you really like a nut-ass nigga because Fred was just like a good dude. Like, it's, it's, it's only like a few people I met in my life that it was hard. You, like, you can't even picture nobody not, like, not, liking them like ad blabber that was in my clique major figures ad blabber like you couldn't picture a nigga not with ad as a person because niggas is, was such good people that it's like how could you not with fred how could you not lava like you know what i'm saying so fred was a good dude man and, and just the sad part about it is you know he had to die alone man you know what i'm saying he in the hospital can't nobody come see him can't nobody visit him like, he just laying in the hospital, and then you just check. Like, that's got to be some of the saddest shit in the world, man. Gil, what was your initial reaction to Fred's passing? I know a lot of people took to the internet. What was your initial reaction? It was just like, damn, I felt I felt bad for his family. You know what I'm saying? That, like, because let's be for real, when you got the coronavirus, you're isolated. It's not like your peoples could come visit you. But I mean, if he was in the hospital for 12 days, he was in the hospital for 12 days all by himself. Can't nobody by his bedside. And then you just die. And then when you die, you can't even get the proper funeral because everybody's still in isolation. So you might get a funeral with two, three, four people at your funeral. Like, that's, that's, and I mean, that's just... I know you recently did some work with Fred. What do you think his legacy will be in hip hop when it's all said and done? I mean, he was a, he was a spitter. I mean, he was a spitter. He was, a, you know, even though he didn't have all the accolades, you know, in the platinum records, and he was a spitter that you had to respect because he talked that shit. And, and he expre- and he expressed himself. In a, in, a, in a good way, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like me, I know I was blackball, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I was I was never going to go triple platinum. I was never going to get a true opportunity. But at the end of the day, y'all going to respect my mouthpiece. Feel me? Y'all going to respect this shit that I'm talking. Y'all ain't got no choice but to do that. Gil, could you take me back to when you first met Fred the Godson? Man, that was years ago, man. Like, I don't even remember my first encounter with Fred the Godson because I knew him so long. Like, like, I don't even remember my first encounter with him. You know what I mean? I, I knew I was in New York, and we was introduced to each other from somebody. I can't quite remember, man. I smoke. I smoke too much, Mikey. But uh, ever since then, it was all love. Like, I just shot a video with Fred in the last year. You know what I'm saying? We shot a video together up in, uh, so like Redden or something. We did it, me, him, and, uh, some other kid named Mooka. Yeah, I was definitely just watching that video today, man. You know, like, when you hear Fred's verses, it's just like, what Fred the Godson verse was not a classic verse, almost. Yeah, he, he was a spitter, man. He did, he did his job very well. That's something nobody could take away from him. You know, this really hit home for hip-hop. Do you think the coronavirus will have any more hip-hop casualties? Well, I pray it doesn't. You know what I mean? But, you know, only God know that. You know, everybody got... You know, God got a plan for everybody. And, you know, once his plan is in place, it ain't nothing we can do about it. So, you know, I hope... I hope don't nobody else die. Whether it's a rapper, singer, regular person, you know, or fucker that worked for SEPTA or, or a lawyer or, you know what I mean, a doctor. Or I hope don't nobody else pass from it. You know what I'm saying? But hopefully not. You know what I'm saying?
I guess that sort of plays into what you were saying about Atlanta, and then you noticed it yourself while you were driving around in Philly, and even me riding around in Connecticut, I see a lot of people out in the by the marinas. Well, you know, at the end of the day, man, obviously those people don't take it as serious as me. You know what I mean? My family. You know, hopefully they don't catch it. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, hopefully we, we, we are coronavirus free. I don't think we are because they keep saying there's more cases every day. But, you know, people people going to do what they want to man. And some people got the mindset of, I, I'm not living in fear of nothing. I'm going to go outside. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I don't really call that living in fear. I call that living in, living in intelligence. You know what I mean? Living in a smart way. But some people call it fear. So, you know. Like, I had a girl on my live tell me this shit ain't real, and I'm like, uh, I know four people that died from this shit. In a month. I have it. I don't know four people that's died in a month in my whole life. Like, so, yes, bitch, it's very real. You better get your mind right. But, you know, she is a young girl, 24. This is not real. Government's lying. I'm on my way out now. So, you know, that's some people's mindset, man. So in saying that, Gil, how do you keep the Rona away and live a healthy lifestyle, you and your family? I mean, we just we just doing what everybody else is doing, quarantine, and Mikey. You know, hoping that this shit don't jump up on us, man. I can respect that, man. I can respect that, man. It's good to actually get to talk to you, you know, because Philly is a frequent spot for me so it's kind of hard for me not being able to come to and from philly all right yeah philly like you i wouldn't say your second home i would say probably your third third because yeah, of florida uh, right miami's your second facts, facts. <laughs> i know you mikey all right gil so i need one positive ar ab story for the report card radio audience because at one point you had actually told me that you had done something to help every single philly hip-hop artist what was that that you had done for ar ab uh i'm pretty sure i probably uh yeah i, I got one time okay okay so so cosmic Kev called me you know what i'm saying he was like uh Yo, who should I get on a come up show, man? Blah 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 blah. You know, we was thinking of some people that he should get on a come up show. And I said, you know what? No, fuck that. Get Ab on there. Get AR on there. You know what I mean? He he gonna join up. And this was years ago when Ab was just really, you know what I mean, setting his feet and his, you know, make setting his feet down in the concrete. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, you know what? Yeah. Uh, damn, I don't know nobody got a number on him. Hold on, I got a number on him right here. Yo, Ab, yo, yeah, it's me and Cosmic Kev on the phone, bro. You want to do the come up show? Yeah, you're fucking right. Yeah, all right, cool, here you go. So, you know, that's the type of shit I do. But, you know, Ab was a solid nigga out here, man. You know what I mean? I, I just wish, I wish that some of the things he did on social media he didn't do. You know what I'm saying? But, You know, it's a, it's, you can't cry over spilt milk, you know what I'm saying? But Ad was a solid dude out here, you know what I mean? He was just trying to break through in the rap game. You know, shout out to him and the whole OBH, man. On a positive note, Gil, you know, A.R. Ab had actually told me that when he was younger, he actually watched you and the major figures coming up in the hip-hop industry. What were your thoughts when, Ca uh, when Cassidy actually gave him an opportunity within Larceny Family? It depends on what you look at as an opportunity. You know what I mean, what, what opportunity did Cash really give him? You know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't say, I can't say I gave you an opportunity. We just was hanging together. Do they? I don't know. Do they got a bunch of music out? Well, I mean, uh, they did a lot of freestyles together on that same platform, the Cosmic Kev platform. I mean, but that's Cosmic Kev looking out. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a difference. You know what I mean? Like, every interview I seen with A.R. Ab after Cassidy, he basically said Cassidy was trying to play him. You know what I'm saying? So, not taking nothing away from Cassidy because, you know, I, I guess, you know, I guess if Cassidy did some work with him, 
and put it, I guess he did help him, you know what I mean? Because Cassidy was the biggest, the bigger artist at the time. And if I do, if I'm the bigger artist at the time and I do some work with you, then I guess that is helping you. But, you know what I mean? I don't really feel as though Ab looked at it that way. But, you know, I, I'm not here to speak for AR Ab or none of the OBH or I'm not here to speak for Cassidy or, the, or, the, or none of the Larceny family. But I don't, I would say, I don't think that Ab looked at it as though it was just, just seeing the interviews that he did after he left Cassidy. He said something about Cassidy he had him sleeping on the couch or something shit he was saying. You know what I mean? Like that. So I don't really think he looked at it like that. I, th- I think he looked at it like, okay, I hung around Cassidy. I might have learned a lot of things about the music industry. Let me go apply it to my real life now. So, you know, Gilly, I want to ask you, really, I got to ask you, being the king of Philly, I wanted to speak with you about the online attack and the Philly, even people from Philly saying that Dark Low is a snitch for the conversation that he had with the feds. Could you speak on that? Man, you know, at the end of the day, man, Dark Low got an ongoing case, man. You know what I mean? They, I don't know if they went to trial yet. I don't know. So for me, man, that ain't really none of my business. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, I don't really get into that, Mikey T, man. One thing I do, man, I just do what I do. And, you know, and I stick to what I do, man. And, and what I do is me and I was ripping game. What I do is me and I was ripping game records. What I do is mac and cheese, my sons. And you know what I mean? Like, that's still an ongoing investigation. So it's yet to see, you know, it's yet to be, see what any of it is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, well, not an investigation, but an ongoing trial type of thing. I think Dark Low still facing charges, got to go to trial. So for me, man, I don't really got no, no comment on that. I don't really got an opinion on that. All right, Gil, I got to respect that, man. I got to respect that. But maybe I could ask you, are you aware, are you aware of a term self-snitching? Is that a term? Yeah. I mean, snitch on, but first of all, any that get locked up, we see self snitching on first forty eight every day. <laughs> and they get locked up and they say, uh, "No, it was me, such and such and such and such in the car." That's self snitching. So yeah, I've definitely heard of the term. All right, so me, such and such and such. But what if they're literally just saying it was me? That's still self snitching. Because what person gonna get on the stand and snitch on themselves? Man, you know, I see that you had uh, G Herbo on the Million Dollars Worth of Game show. Could you tell me how, uh, it seemed like you two had a great relationship. Could you tell me how, like, you guys actually uh, formed the relationship? Well, G Herbo, that's nephew. You know what I mean? My, uh, my, my, one of my old, one of my old cash money millionaire rebels. And my brother for life, Mickey, we was both signed to cash money. He managed G Herbo. So, you know, just the process of me seeing Mickey win, coming from where we came from in our cash money days, you know, it's beautiful. You know what I mean? And Mickey's a very intelligent guy who know how to put shit into action. So, you know, G Herbo is surrounded by some really good people. Shout out to Mickey. Shout out to V. You know what I mean? And, and G Herbo is an intelligent young guy himself. So, you know, nephew know what he's doing. That's right, man. That's right. <clears throat> you also had Waka Flock on the show, man. How has it been having guests like that on the show? Can we expect any more? Yeah, yeah. As soon as this coronavirus is over, we're going to go get a lot of people, man. Yeah, you know I mean, Waka's a good dude, man. Waka's a solid guy, man. He always been a solid guy. You know what I'm saying? I admire him and his family. And, uh, you know, I admire him as a, first of all, I admire him as a rapper. I admire him as a, as a family man, as a businessman. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, just an all-around straight, straight-up dude. Wop it a long way, you feel me? Gil, the last topic I want to touch on with you is these Instagram battles. Have you been tuning in? Yes, sir. All right, so I want to ask you, Gil, what's your thoughts on... Fi- go back right here, Mikey. Let's say what's up to Mikey T. He's a big he's time. Gonna, he's yeah, a I big time. Yeah. Yo, Mac, Mac, let me get what's your... Let me get your take right before we jump into this next exclusive, man. If it was an Instagram battle, 50 Cent, Ja Rule, who's taking that one? 50 Cent. All right, 37 Max says 50 Cent. Who you say? 
Uh, I say maybe Fifty Cent. I thought you, but, but y'all, but Instagram y'all, battle, like, like, like you know, they play the songs back and forth, like how yeah, Fifty Cent, yeah, Fifty Cent. I mean, but Ja Rule got a lot nah, of hits. Ja Rule got a like lot of hits. I like songs, but I think Fifty Cent though. Yeah, I think Fifty just because Fifty gonna come more on street shit. You know what I mean? I thought you meant like. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. You know, on, and on street shit, I mean, on battles, you know, the the more street shit is always going to win. You know what I mean? Ja Rule had a lot of girly records, you know what I'm saying? So, could it be interesting, or should they just leave it alone, though, Gil? I mean, no, it would definitely be interesting, because Ja Rule ain't no hoe. It's not like Ja Rule. Ja Rule got mega hits. You know what I'm saying? It's not like Ja Rule is it's just some nigga who, no, he's so full of records, too. You know what I'm saying? But I just think 50, you know, had a, a not necessarily a better body of work, but 50 Cent shit is going to be more street and more, more gutter, more ring out in the club, more, you know what I mean? Where, you know, Ja Rule had a lot of his like, I'm going to be living it up, but I do. I'm gonna be that was a banger. But, do, do, and you know, it was a, a straight, but he had a bunch of joints like that. But then, you know, 50 Cent had, you said you were gangster, but you never shot nothing. You said you were wankster. You know, he had street anthems opposed to, you know, Ja Rule had lady anthems. You know what I mean? So that's the only reason why I would pick 50 Cent. But let's look at the realistic of it, Gilly. You're a songwriter. Mm-hmm. Um which of these two men is the better songwriter? You talked about the clubs. Which one's the better songwriter? I don't know, man. You know, at the at the end of the day, it's about what you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? That's like that's like saying who's the better songwriter, Jay Z or Drake. It, it depends on what you're looking for. You feel what I'm saying? If you're looking for that that's gonna give you some singing shit, you know what I mean? Then you know some some melodic shit. You know, if that's the type of music you like, then you're going to go for, for Drake. If you like the groove on, sometimes rapping, that shit going to touch your soul. And he going to say some shit that, that you're going to be like, oh, my God, then that's over. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like okay, that's like saying, you know, it all, it all depends on what you like. You know, that's what makes the world go around. We all different, Mikey. So... You you may ask, uh, uh, who the better songwriter, um, uh, Ja Rule or Talib Kweli? Now, is a backpack rapper. They like that type of music. They picking Talib Kweli. You feel what I'm saying? You know, another thing I'm thinking is like, is this one too personal to put on live stream? You know, because I think that that feud you know it it was a little bit more worse than you and wayne because i could see you and wayne being on the live stream together but there was their feud was a little bit more personal right oh uh, yeah, yeah well you know that was that but see at the end of the day it's all about what they're trying to accomplish from it you know what i mean because at the end of the day that would be the biggest live back and forth that they ever had i don't care i don't who battle unless you get Drake versus Jay Z? Ain't going. It, it, it's not. It's, that's the only battle that you could do on live that could possibly almost come close to the numbers that Ja Rule or Fifty Cent gonna do. Because guess why? People know they don't f- each other. People know. Then people going to go on there just to see the antics that 50 Cent going to pull up. But they know he going to do some crazy shit. You feel what I'm saying? So so it's like, it's like, you know, that would that would break the internet, literally. That shit would crash the internet if if, 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 if 50 and, and Ja did that. But I don't really think, you know, 50 Cent is in a whole different headspace, man. That nigga's, that nigga's cleaning up, man. That nigga got shoes on ABC, man, and shit like that, man. You feel what I'm saying? So, for him, it's like a rap battle. Come on, man. I'm, I'm producing four shows this year, man. I ain't got no time for that shit. Damn. 
I was going to ask you if you could put two people up against the, each other in an Instagram battle, who it would be. Uh, I think a good one would be Jeezy and T.I. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everyone's always talking about them as the king of the South. Yeah, you know I mean, I think it, I think a good one would be Jeezy and T.I. Yeah, you know I mean, but just because I like both of their music, you know what I'm saying? And just just for me, that's just my opinion. I think both of them had really good music for them, especially for the moments they was in. You know what I mean? And both of them had a hell of a run. You know what I mean? And both of them from Atlanta, so that'll be some that'll be some real live good shit right there.